Hey, welcome to The Greenhouse. I'm Alex. Did you ever notice when you're listening to music that a single unique instrument could change the sound or the character of the entire piece? There are lots of examples all around us of things, objects, places, processes that are profoundly altered when we introduce a very small amount of something different. Today, we're gonna to use all five of our senses to explore the impact of very tiny quantities of parts per million. So come on. Let's begin with things we smell. Even though our sense of smell isn't nearly as good as a dog's is, still, human noses are pretty sensitive odor detectors. For example, in the kitchen, we can smell vanilla when its concentration is about 0.1 parts per million. We can smell the aroma of roses when the concentration of the fragrant chemical rose oxide is only 0.5 parts per billion. So those are really small numbers. Let's try to visualize that. A typical public swimming pool has a volume of about 1 million liters. Here's a 1 liter bottle. So its fractional volume is 1 1 millionth or 1 part per million. Now let's put me in the frame at the right scale. There we go. So here's one part per million, and one part per billion would be the size of a marble in the swimming pool. These tiny numbers are important because trace concentrations of many substances can have a pretty big impact. For example, our sense of smell informs us both about nice things like roses and perfume, but also warns us when something dangerous is near. For example, the natural gas that might heat your house or your hot water has methylmercaptan added to give it a distinctive odor meant to alert us to leaking gas. We can detect methylmercaptan at a concentration of one part per billion. What amount of a trace component can we see? Human vision is adapted to detect light reflected from an object in the visible range of the spectrum. So what do we see in a simple experiment with ink in water? How much ink would I have to add to make a visible difference? The beaker on the left is pure water and serves as a control. The second beaker is 200 parts per million black ink. The third is 400 parts per million. In these beakers, we have 50 parts per million and 25 parts per million. Just a little bit of color, but still visually different from the control. Next, let's look at some natural examples of the impact of trace components. Minerals are crystalline solids with atomic structures arranged in very specific patterns. This means that even a small change in their composition can have a big impact. For example, the mineral corundum is made of aluminum and oxygen, and we most often encounter it as the grit on sandpaper. A pure corundum crystal with only aluminum and oxygen in it is colorless. However, in the natural world, few things turn up in pure form. Transition metals are common impurities in corundum and they do amazing things. For example, adding some chromium turns a colorless corundum into a vibrant red ruby. Swapping a chromium for an aluminum changes the shape of the crystal lattice and makes light behave differently when it strikes the crystal. Red is reflected and the other colors are absorbed. You only need about 4,000 parts per million chromium to turn corundum ruby red. If, instead of chromium, we swap in titanium and iron, we've got a beautiful blue sapphire. And this is really cool. You need both titanium and iron, but you only need 0.01% of the aluminums replaced. That's 100 parts per million. So this really is a big response to a small change. And let's look at the diamonds. Diamonds are of course pure carbon, and here even tinier transition metal impurities can make a big difference. It only takes one part per million boron to make a diamond blue. One part per million nitrogen turns it yellow. There can also be crystal defects, missing atoms in the crystal lattice that make diamonds pretty much every other color. These gems are fabulous examples of the importance of trace components, and it's easy to think of other examples of tiny impurities that completely change the behavior of materials. Another crystalline material that changes in a big way due to the presence of trace elements is the semiconductor. When crystalline silicon is modified by adding one part per billion boron, its electrical properties change, creating the building block of the electronic devices we rely on every day, from kitchen appliances to computers and phones, electronic switches, toys, and everything with LED lights. If we return to our spice rack, we find that our sense of taste is not quite as well developed as our sense of smell. 
For example, to taste vanilla, we need 0.7 parts per million, seven times as much as we can smell. If I add 2,500 parts per million of peppermint oil to a recipe for vanilla ice cream, I create a completely different flavor. But of course, I can detect the taste of peppermint at a much lower concentration, around 0.3 parts per million. In drinking water, trace components are really important, and we monitor them closely even when we can't actually taste anything. For example, during the Flint, Michigan water crisis, some drinking water samples contained 100 parts per billion lead. The U.S. federal action level for lead contamination is 15 parts per billion, and the EPA target concentration for lead in drinking water is zero. Even one part per billion is enough to damage human health. Finally, what about our sense of touch? Think about how nice it feels to have an unseasonably warm day in winter. But what about an unseasonably warm day in the summer? That can be more problematic, both for human and natural communities. We're already seeing episodes of extreme heat all over the world. The temperature of Earth's atmosphere is increasing because of the way that energy from the sun interacts with greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. As we burn fossil fuels and release more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, we also see global temperature increase. The current concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is about 415 parts per million. And a lot of people wonder how something that's present in such low concentrations can have a big impact, or even any impact. But when you hear the number 415 parts per million, I hope you're thinking, wow, that's a lot, because it is. We've already seen how trace amounts of substances can completely change the behavior of materials and profoundly impact our health. The carbon dioxide that we've already released to the atmosphere is warming the planet. And it's time for us to get to work and reduce the impact of our behavior back down to a very small amount.